Hello, so today I'm going to do a video on the Chinese M65 gas mask. Now I'm filming it in the bathroom today because I just want to see how the lighting works in this room with a bit of natural light being diffused by the curtains behind me and the ceiling light on. So, Chinese M65 comes in this little bag like this. Um, little Velcro bags, very similar to the M69 bag, might be exactly the same. And here is the mask. Now, this is a very strange mask because it's basically a cheek filter mask with the cheek filter attached to the mask itself. Now, this is kind of a baffling mask to me. It's maybe one of the worst gas masks ever designed, but it's also quite well made, which is really weird. So it's got a good strap system with a good head harness, as you can see. Um, it's quite a strange strap system because it's a six point strap system, but it also has the cheek filter attached to its own strap. But the cheek filter on this mask is actually like sealed into the rubber. You can't take it out as far as I'm aware. Now it does have this very cool sort of communist star um, style thing on top of the cheek filter, which you can actually take off. So if we get that off, there you go. So there's the intake valve there. Here's just a piece of plastic that's in there. And there you can see where the particle filter is in there before you get to the charcoal filter. But as far as I'm aware, there is no way you can actually open this up and take the cheek filter out of the mask. Now, the rubber around here looks a bit loose, but I think that would probably rip it if I tried to... Uh, that's just like a rubber band, okay. But yeah, as far as I'm aware, there is no way of actually disassembling this to um, get the cheek filter out. So not exactly sure how they did this in the factory to make this all go together, but apparently they did. I guess they somehow moulded the rubber around the filter when it was on the inside. Now, I'm not sure how safe this filter is going to be to breathe through, so I'm not going to exactly want to breathe through it, but I might do it very briefly in the video. So, obviously, this mask, I assume, in Chinese military service was replaced by the Type 69, which was the far better Chinese mask, because it was the one that had the um, sort of 40mm filter design that was a bit like the PMG. So you go, there's some markings in there. It says 1788, so I'm assuming that's um, made in the 8th month of 1980. What's that? August or September? August? Yeah, August. Um, so... Let's just show you the mask on. It's got the speech diaphragm in it. It's got the standard Chinese, I think Hype said this was a Model B voice diaphragm, or Type B voice diaphragm, where you've got the plastic cover there, then you've got the exhale valve and voice diaphragm combined in here. The green rubber bit is the voice diaphragm. That valve around the outside is the exhale valve, so you can see the mask without that in there. there. So let's put that back together. But yeah, triangular lenses. So it's all, all in all a pretty well made mask, except for the fact that it's got a non-replaceable filter in it. So I'm sure you can understand what the problem of a mask might be like this, is that you might be issued by a mask and by the time you need to use it, the filter is already expired. Now often these are incorrectly called Vietnamese gas masks. I think the reason was that Communist China supplor, uh, supplied the North Vietnamese army and the Viet Cong with these masks during the Vietnam War. So obviously lots of people see these and assume these are Vietnamese masks, but they're actually Chinese masks that were just exported to Vietnam in large numbers. So anyway, let's try it on. As I said, I'm not going to breathe through it for very long, just in case the filter's a bit dodgy, but... Right, so... If I can straighten it out... And do the straps up and hopefully not get it caught on my head. The rubber does have a nice smell to it, I will say that. So that's that, and then where's the cheek filter strap? Because as you can see, this is a bit confusing on how exactly it does up. Unless that does both the straps up together with the cheek filter, I'm not quite sure. But I think that might be the case. Now, one of these straps doesn't seem to adjust as well as the others, so apologies. I don't know how well I'm going to be able to tighten this strap on the right there. Now, I'm not sure if it's completely pressurizing, because as I said, some of these straps don't seem to tighten very well. But there we go, I'll just do it like that, because as I said, it's probably not all that safe to breathe through. Right, let's get the air freshener out and see if this mask will sort of work. So here we go. So 
so far I can't smell anything, so maybe this old filter in here is working. I think this does look quite cool despite the fact it's got this massive kind of tumour cheek on it, but it is quite a lightweight mask. And I suppose there's less bulk with having a filter like this than there is having a big canister filter jutting out the side. Now the valve's stuck. I can definitely smell it there. Okay, that valve is somehow stuck. Hang on. Okay, I can inhale again. So somehow, I don't know how, this valve actually got stuck and um, it stopped me inhaling through the mask. So that's a bit of a design flaw. Suffocation feature, let's just clip that back in. And the valve stuck again. <laughs> I think, maybe. Now, without the valve cover on, it seems to work fine, but for whatever reason, this simple kind of valve seems to keep getting stuck. There we go, it's done it again. All right, let's get the mask off. But yeah, the filter does seem to be working because I can't smell the air freshener. So that is something. But yeah, so this is the Chinese Model M65. As said, um, well, the sting in my eyes a bit now. I've not actually got the door closed, so the smell isn't as strong as it would be. But the mask definitely actually was working, which surprised me. But yeah. This valve design isn't brilliant. I guess the other piece of plastic was designed, so um, it keeps the valve in place, but I guess it's actually not all that tough. Now that's fallen on the floor somewhere, and I can't actually see where it's fallen when I opened that up. But, um, yeah, so, other than the valve design, this isn't actually all that bad a mask, which might surprise you, because I got this expecting this to be one of the worst masks I've ever seen. It's really not, to be honest. Now, as said, I don't like the idea that the mask comes with a filter sealed into it and the filter isn't replaceable, but it seems that filter actually had a decent capacity and worked quite well. It's got Tissot tubes and everything as you can see inside. Obviously, the model type 69, whatever you want to call it, is a better mask than this one simply because it takes a replaceable 40mm filter, but otherwise it's a very similar mask to this one. Um, this bag also came with what I assume, I've not opened them, it's going to be some anti-fog inserts, not that this mask actually seems to need them. I assume that's what's in there. Should we open it and have a look, just in case it's something different? But I'm assuming that's what it is, because it's in that standard kind of Soviet-style thing where you put the lens inserts in. So let's get that tape off of there. And my eyes are really stinging now, thanks to the uh, stuff in the air. And then if I can work out how to open it. That just... Prizes apart. Yeah, there we go. It's got mask inserts in them. So, there you go. There's the little film inserts. That's just an anti-fog insert, but as I said, this mask doesn't actually really need them because it's quite well made. That's nice it came from there. I ordered this directly from China, and I think it was about £20, which wasn't bad. I, I'd held off on ordering one of these for a while because I'd seen them for more than £20, and I've had a lot of issues with UK customs before getting stuff like this where Although it's perfectly legal to buy and import, that doesn't mean that customs won't sit on it for ages or potentially somebody in customs will steal it. But thankfully, this one came through no problem. So, yeah. As said, I wouldn't really recommend you breathe through a filter as old as this, because, you know, I did it for the video, because why not? I'm a gas mask YouTuber and I sacrifice my health for you. I've got enough problems anyway, but I wouldn't recommend that people actually do breathe through these old filters. But, yeah. Once I finish filming this video, I'm going to have a look around on the floor with a torch and my glasses on to see if I can find where that piece of plastic fell out of the mask from. Yeah, the intake valve seems a bit flawed, but other than that, the mask itself is actually a lot better than I was expecting. And I suppose if it was designed as a lightweight kind of disposable mask, it's quite good at that. But as I said, it's a very weird design if you look at it from this way, where the actual filter compartment sits separately from the mask. When I first saw these masks online, I was assuming that that entire rubber section would be attached sort of there. 
like a um, you know M17's cheek pouches or something like that. But it's not. It's one of those masks that's actually better in practice than it looks when you get an image from it. And I do really like this sort of Chinese star, um, sort of communist star intake valve on it. That is quite cool looking. You know, why don't more masks have cool intake valves? But anyway, Chinese Type 65 or Model 65 gas mask. Um, surprisingly good, actually. A lot better than I thought it would be. Very lightweight. Um, very interesting mask, actually. More interesting than I thought it would be. But as said, these aren't actually Vietnamese masks. It's just that China exported them to Vietnam. So if you see this called, um, like, rare... Um, North Vietnamese Army gas mask, it's not rare, it's a Chinese Model 65 or Type 65 mask, but yeah, it's surprisingly good actually.